Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Jessica Haynes is an assistant professor at McEwen University. She enjoys teaching about ecology, evolution, and conservation biology, and is currently working on the Franklin's ground squirrel in Alberta in collaboration with Nature Alberta. In her spare time, she likes to be outdoors exploring nature, usually accompanied by her two Labrador retrievers. Welcome, Jessica. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you all about squirrels today. Um, as Steph said, I work with squirrels. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself before we talk about um, squirrels. So I'm a researcher and uh, instructor and professor at McEwen University. Um, so I teach undergraduate courses and in the summer I try to get out and do some field research and right now we're working on Franklin's ground squirrels. Um, I'll tell you more about the research that we're working on later on in this presentation. For now, I just wanted to mention that you will see a few pictures of squirrels in live traps um, or being handled. Uh, for all of the pictures of us handling squirrels, we do have all provincial permits that are necessary for the research, and we have approval from our Animal Research Ethics Board um, to do this work. This is a picture of me handling a juvenile Franklin's ground squirrel, which I'll talk more about that afterward. So before we talk much about squirrels, I want to talk about what are squirrels. Um, and I got this picture off of Wikipedia, which obviously take information with on Wikipedia with a grain of salt, but it's really good for open source photos. So I was looking at squirrel photos on Wikipedia. And um, these are just a collection of photos that um, were on there. And I think they show a, a great amount of the diversity that we see in squirrels. The way I think about squirrels is they're kind of rodent, a type of rodent that has a fluffy tail of some sort. I'll talk about what they aren't in a minute. But uh, one thing that's neat about squirrels is that there's actually a fair amount of variety in the group, in the different groups. So uh, this one is um, a type of squirrel that is quite colorful. And this one, sorry, lost me. There we go. Uh, this one is a flying squirrel. It's the Indian flying, Indian giant flying squirrel, which um, actually has a wingspan of close to, or is actually close to one meter long. So they're quite large. And they also can be quite small. So this is a least chipmunk, which we have here in Alberta, and I'll talk about them later on. So it's actually a really neat group of species. And um, I'll talk more about the ones we have in Alberta in a minute. First, just to tell you what squirrels are not. So what are not squirrels? Uh, rabbits are not squirrels. You know, they're around the same size, but they're actually a, a very different family. Um, they're in the legomorph group, so they do not count as squirrels. Pika, which we also have in Alberta, um, look also very squirrel-like, but they actually are um, closely related to rabbits and hares. They're in that family, legomorphs, so they are also not a squirrel. And this one is a vole, so um, voles and mice and rats, they also kind of are squirrel shaped because they're also a type of rodent, um, but they are not a squirrel. Um, in, they're not in the group that we're talking about today. So I get asked quite often when I talk about squirrels, um, why should we care about them? So I have a few reasons that um, I think you should care about squirrels. Um, one is that they're very charismatic. And this is one reason that I keep working with them. They have a ton of personality. They have a ton of opinions about the world around them. And that makes them really fun um, to observe and to interact with and to watch. Um, so as a researcher, I love that they have um, a ton of personality. Um, but they also are a species group that everyone has an opinion about. So these are Richardson's ground squirrels. And in Alberta, we also call them gophers. And some people find these really cute. Um, if I show kids these kinds of pictures, they love them. 
And some people look at this picture and see a pest um, because they do create some damage in some uh, rural areas. Um, and so either way, uh, we can connect to the species because they, they, most people have interacted with some kind of squirrel. Um, and I'm also uh, have done work on red squirrels. That's another species that I find quite charismatic because again, they have lots of attitude. They've got lots of personality. And also when I mentioned that I've worked on red squirrels, I get the same uh, comment that um, either people find them really cute or they see them as a pest. So again, something that we can all connect on, even if we disagree about uh, what we think of them, they're definitely a charismatic group of species. And also very cute. So I used this photo um, in a kid's activity last summer and um, I actually created bookmarks out of it and handed it out to kids at one of our events. And I ended up with none left at the end of the event, even though they had about eight or 10 different bookmarks to choose from. Um, because they just loved this one. They just thought this Richardson's ground squirrel, which also is called gopher in Alberta and many people see as a pest, the kids just thought it was really cute. And so um, I, again, I really like working with this group because it's something that is really easy to connect with, um, with people and kids especially really enjoy them. The other reason that I really like squirrels is that they live in lots of different habitats. So the Richardson's ground squirrels that I showed you previously, they like grasslands and kind of open habitats. Um, we also have lots of squirrel species that live in the mountains in Alberta. And then we have um, squirrel species that live in forests and lots of other types of habitats as well. So regardless of where you live in the province, you can probably find a squirrel close to you, um, whether it's right outside your house or whether it's in the natural areas close to you. Um, and so this makes them a really great species group to use to get people to connect to nature. They're big enough that they're pretty easy to see if you know what you're looking for. And they have enough attitude that they often don't care if you're around um, or if they do care, you usually still get to see them. And then they're in all of these different habitats. So that's uh, why and we should care about squirrels because they help connect people with nature. There actually are also some squirrels that are of concern for conservation biologists, um, but we'll talk about that later on in the presentation. So the talk today is about squirrels in Alberta. So I just want you to take a minute and see if you can count uh, how many squirrels we have in Alberta. And you may or may not know, but we actually have 14 different species in Alberta. So for today's talk, I'm going to tell you about the different groups of squirrels, how you can tell the different species apart and where you might find them in the province. Then we'll do a little bit of a quiz to see if you've learned how to identify squirrels. So you'll get to do some practice of your squirrel ID skills. And then I'll talk about squirrel conservation later on. So first we're talking about chipmunks. So we have the least chipmunk and two others. So um, you may not actually be aware that we have three chipmunk species. Um, least chipmunk is the one that many people are familiar with, but the other two are also species that we have in the province. So one way that you can identify chipmunks versus other types of squirrels is that they have these white and black stripes that extend down their back, but also, more importantly, they have these white and black stripes that are on their faces. So some of the other squirrels that we'll talk about today don't have these white and black stripes on their faces. And so that's one tip that you can use. If you see a small squirrel and you're not sure if it's a chipmunk or another type of squirrel, then uh, look for those stripes on their face and that'll, that'll help you distinguish them. They tend to be quite small. 
Um, outside of Alberta, there are bigger chipmunk species, but in Alberta, these chipmunks are all very small species. And they also have that nice long tail that is also distinctive. Now, if you wanna be able to tell the three species apart, they're actually pretty challenging to tell apart. But generally, if you're in most of the province outside of southwestern or western areas of the province, it will be a least chipmunk. They live in a wide variety of forested areas and, and other types of habitat. They live in mountains as well um, and foothills. And so they uh, are quite, quite a wide ranging species in Alberta. Um, the other two are difficult to tell apart because they can look pretty similar in the field. But generally, you want to look for the reddish areas on their body to tell which species you're looking at. The red-tailed chipmunk has a red tail, as you might guess from the name, and also a reddish body. And the yellow pine chipmunk has a redder body, um, but doesn't have the right red tail by the red tail, like the red-tailed chipmunk. These two have a much more narrow distribution in the province. So the red-tailed chipmunk actually only occurs in Waterton, West Castle area in southwestern Alberta. And the yellow pine chipmunk has a redder, or sorry, the, that one lives, the one with the redder body, has, lives in forested or bushy habitats in the mountains of western or southwestern Alberta. So basically, if you're outside the mountains, it will be a least chipmunk. If you're in those other regions, it could be one of the others. If you're not sure, you can always take a picture and upload the photo to iNaturalist, which is a citizen science app, and people will help identify it for you. A few other things about chipmunks, they're active in the summer. They can be pretty hard to find because they are so small, but they'll often tell you if they're there because they like to yell if you disturb them um, when you walk by. They're not as loud as red squirrels, um, which most people are familiar with because they also yell when you walk by them. Um, but they, they do vocalize and that's often one way that I can tell that there's a chipmunk nearby. They do go into hibernation or torpor in the winter. So essentially their metabolism uh, drops down so that they can basically sleep all winter. Um, and then in the summer, they eat a variety of foods. So they eat fruits, they'll eat flowers, they'll eat fungus, nuts, They've also been known to eat insects and caterpillars and larvae, and they have been seen eating crops, and they'll even eat uh, things like bird's eggs and nestlings, which is actually a common theme with a lot of these squirrels. They do primarily eat vegetation or forms of vegetation, but a lot of them actually will eat meat when they get the chance. So those are our three chipmunk species. You'll get a chance to test your knowledge on them later when we do our squirrel ID quiz. The biggest group of squirrels in Alberta is the ground squirrels. Now, there's so many of them, we're going to talk about them over two slides. So I've grouped them according to the ones that have stripes and the ones that don't have stripes. So we're starting with the ones that have stripes. There are two types types of squir ground squirrels in Alberta that have stripes. The golden mantled ground squirrel and the 13 lined ground squirrel. The golden mountained, the golden mantled ground squirrel is often mistaken as a chipmunk. But like I said earlier, one thing to tell uh, chipmunks, um, to, how to distinguish chipmunks from other species is to look for their stripes on their face. So if you look at the golden mantled ground squirrel on this slide, you'll see that it does not have stripes on its face. It only has stripes on its back. So that's one way you can tell them apart. They are quite different sizes as well, but if you're not familiar with squirrels, it might be um, difficult at first to, to distinguish the different species um, because if you're just not used to thinking about the sizes of them, or if you've never seen how small a chipmunk is, this might look like a chipmunk, but it is actually a type of brown squirrel. The other ways to, to distinguish a golden mantled ground squirrel um, is to look for the reddish shoulders and um, that's why they're called the golden mantled ground squirrel. They have additional coloring on there that makes them kind of bright. Um, and then they also have a gray tail and back. 
And these are squirrels that like to hang out in the mountains in the province. So that's another tip if you're hanging out in the mountains and you're seeing a striped squirrel, um, it could be a golden mantled ground squirrel. The other one that has stripes is the 13 lined ground squirrel. Um, they look a little different. They do have stripes on their back, but it's actually a combination of stripes and spots. So if you look carefully on this uh, squirrel on this slide, you can see that it does have stripes. They're brown and tan stripes, but also has spots. Now this one does have stripes on the back of its head. Um, you can't see it very well in this photo, um, but it's not the striking black and white stripes that chipmunks have on their face. These ones tend to live in open grasslands um, and open habitats. So they do live in a bit different habitats than some of the squirrels we've talked about so far. So that's another way that you could tell them apart. Okay, on to this ground squirrels that don't have stripes. So these are three that might be easily mistaken for one another if you're not paying attention to their color patterns, but I'll take you through what to look for to be able to tell them apart. Uh, we have the Colombian ground squirrel on the left. In the top right corner, we have the Franklin's ground squirrel. In the bottom right corner, we have Richardson's ground squirrel. Colombian ground squirrels can be distinguished because they have a reddish face and reddish feet or legs, or at least some reddish on those parts of their body. That distinguishes it from Franklin's ground squirrel, which I'll talk about in a minute. They, the Colombian squirrel also has this gray speckled back um, and they have a grayish tail and a light underside. They live in alpine meadows. So if you're in the mountains and you're seeing ground squirrels around the mountains in the meadows, there's a good chance that it's a Colombian ground squirrel. The Franklin's ground squirrel um, is built somewhat similarly to the Colombian ground squirrel, except it has a longer, bushier tail. And that's also how you can tell it apart from the Richardson's ground squirrel. It almost looks like someone took a ground squirrel and stuck a tree squirrel tail on it because they have this big ground squirrel body, but then this really long, bushy, fluffy tail. The other way you can tell them apart is that they have gray, uh, a gray head and gray tail. So that distinguishes them from the Colombian ground squirrel that has the red face and red feet. So if it has a gray face and gray head, that's going to make it a Franklin's ground squirrel. If it has the reddish uh, parts on its face, then that's the Colombian ground squirrel. Franklin's ground squirrel also has a speckled back that can be brown or reddish brown. And they tend to live in dense forests or vegetation. Um, so like dense gra uh, grasslands. We'll actually talk about that more because I wanna tell you a little bit more about where we found them through our research so that you can help us find them in the future. So we'll talk more about that. The Richardson's ground squirrel, I actually show you a few pictures of earlier. This was the same species that was eating a dandelion earlier and the same species that there was a group of them all standing on their back legs like meerkats. Um, the Richardson's ground squirrel is also called gopher in Alberta. So it's the one that a lot of people view as a pest. If you look at their color pattern, they don't have uh, that distinctive reddish face and feet. They don't have the gray head or long gray bushy tail. And so that's how you can tell them apart from the other species. They tend to be light gray or brown in color and kind of a similar kind of color pattern, pattern across their whole body. Though there is some color variation with them. So this is one that we saw this summer. It had, it had a nice cinnamon uh, brown color to it. Um, not very common, at least in the places that we were, but they do have some color variation but they still don't have the distinctive color patterns that you see with Franklin's ground squirrel and Colombian ground squirrel. So once you practice looking at these different species, you can get pretty good at distinguishing them pretty quickly. These ones also have a shorter tail, which all again distinguishes them from the Franklin's ground squirrel. They really like open habitats. So grasslands or um, areas that people have uh, mowed down, um, and that's why people find that they're pests because they really like hanging out with people. 
I like ground squirrels because they have really interesting biology. So they're active during the summer and they hibernate during the winter. You might be familiar with that because if you have gophers or Richardson's ground squirrels, as we call them, if you have them around, you've probably noticed that they disappear for the winter. But it's actually pretty incredible because many of them don't actually come out of hibernation until May and sometimes quite late in May. And they can go into hibernation again as early as July or August, although some will stay up as late as September. Um, that means that for some species, they actually hibernate for about 70% of the year, which means they're only active for a very small portion of the year. So they have very little time to get anything done. In that 30% of the year that they're being active, they have to go through their breeding season, they have to raise their kids, they have to make sure that their kids get ready for hibernation and bulk up. They have to make sure that they themselves bulk up in preparation for hibernation. Um, so they actually accomplish a lot in a very short period of time. So I find that really fascinating that they are able to do all of that in such a short season. Many ground squirrels, um, you'll often see them in, in colonies. Um, so I've seen Colombians in groups, I've seen Richardsons in very large uh, colonies, but some of the others are more solitary. So Franklin's ground squirrel, you will often see multiple individuals, but not very many. They live in lower densities and they're not as social as some of the other species. So there's actually quite a bit of variation in how they spend their time. They um, are mainly herbivores, so they'll eat seeds and fruit and other forms of plants and bulbs. Um, in the summer, when we saw Franklin's ground squirrel, we often saw them eating dandelions early in the summer. And then they would switch to fruits such as rose hips and dogwood berries and raspberries when those became available. The next group I wanna tell you about are, about are marmots and woodchucks. Um, really, we could group these in with the ground squirrels because they're, they're very similar. They're essentially large ground squirrels in terms of how they spend their year. So they also have a similar year where they hibernate for a large portion of the year and then they're active through the summer. And they eat a lot of the same things that um, ground squirrels will eat. Uh, but they're much larger. So if you've ever been in the mountains, um, and seeing what looks like a supersized wood, uh, ground squirrel, that it would be a marmot. And then we have two different species of marmot. We have hoary marmot and yellow-bellied marmot. We also have woodchuck. Woodchuck are also called groundhogs. Um, and I'll tell you a bit more about those, but they have a bit more variety in the places that you would find them. So hoary marmot, the name hoary means frosted. And so if you look at them, they have kind of a frosted, grizzled appearance. And that sets them apart from the yellow-bellied marmot who has a much brighter looking appearance. The, heart, the hoary uh, marmot has a gray back with a light chest and belly. They have light cheeks. They tend to have dark around their ears and white on their muzzle and forehead. Their tails um, and hind, limb, hind limbs are darker and they can have some reddish brown in there but again, not, not as brightly colored as the yellow-bellied marmot. Because the yellow-bellied marmot has a red chest and belly, and then the rest of their body is red and gray. They also have a lot of white on their face, so they have white gray on their muzzle and forehead, and then dark brown on their ears and cheeks. Both the yellow-bellied marmot and the hoary marmot are found in the mountains and foothills. These can be a bit tough to tell apart. So if you're not familiar with these species and you see them out there and you're not really sure which one you've spotted, you can always submit it to iNaturalist to get some help with species identification. I'm certainly not the best practice with marmots and woodchucks because I spend most of my time in uh, parkland areas of, in the province where we don't have the marmots. We might find woodchucks there, but not the marmots. So I definitely would submit my observations to iNaturalist. Um, woodchucks, um, which are the ones that are also known as groundhogs, they have um, a gray back and dark gray-brown tail and under, um, 
and their undersides and legs can vary in color. So they can be gray all the way up to reddish brown. So you can see in this picture that this uh, woodchuck actually has a fair amount of reddish on it, which makes it maybe a little bit harder to tell apart from some of the marmot species if you're not familiar with them. They typically though have a dark forehead, although looking through observations of this species on iNaturalist, there is a bit of variation in their face, but generally they do have a darker forehead and darker head than what you're seeing on the, the marmots. Um, and these uh, woodchucks, they tend to live in lowland areas. So they tend to be in forests and they tend to be in fields. So if you're seeing something that looks like a marmot, but you're far away from the mountains or you're in very different habitat than the mountains, you're probably seeing a woodchuck. Um, so again, they can be pretty tough to tell apart. So you can always submit them to iNaturalist to get some help. The last group are the tree squirrels. I have a fondness for tree squirrels because I started out working on red squirrels. My PhD work was on red squirrels. Um, and so I really like the tree squirrels. And we actually have three species in Alberta, although only two of them are native. So I'll talk about the Eastern gray squirrel in a minute. That one has been introduced to Alberta, but the other two species are ones that are native species. So red squirrel is the one that you're probably familiar with. Um, if you live anywhere near trees, you probably have seen them either in your backyard or in green spaces near your house um, or in parks um, outside the city. They really like forested areas. They're pretty distinctive looking because they have this reddish fur um, across their body, except for their lighter bellies. They do have this white eye ring, which um, can make them pretty sharp to look at. You can always tell when they're staring at you. And they have a long fluffy tail. So they like trees. So uh, they are very uh, good at running around trees. They're an arboreal species. So they're very acrobatic and have a ton of personality. Northern flying squirrels um, are the other type of tree squirrel that we have. They are really interesting because they're actually a nocturnal species. So if you look at this picture, it has very large eyes and that's because they have um, good night vision since they do come out at night. They have brownish or gray fur, but what's really distinctive about them is that they have a skin flap on the side of their bodies that allows them to glide between, between trees. They like to live in forested areas across the province, and you may actually have them in your backyard. So they actually do come into uh, suburban or even urban areas if they can find bird feeders that they can visit at night close to trees. So I wouldn't expect they'd be far away from uh, trees in the middle of the city, but if you live near a green space in, in a city, there's a good chance that you have uh, flying squirrels um, hanging around. Um, and if you check your bird feeder out at night, you may actually see them. The Eastern gray squirrel is the one that's been introduced. So they originally from, were from further east, and now they live in urban areas in Alberta. They primarily are found around Calgary. That's where the main population is. But looking at observations of them on iNaturalist, they are occasionally spotted elsewhere. They have um, a similar body structure to the other tree squirrels where they have this long fluffy tail, um, but they are a bit larger, um, actually quite a bit larger than the native uh, squirrels. Their color varies. They're called the Eastern gray squirrel because they generally are gray in appearance with um, some maybe browner uh, fur um, mixed in there. But they also are black, and that's um, a really common color that you'll see in Calgary. So a lot of people don't realize that they're called the gray squirrel because they look black, but it's just simply two different color variations of the same species. These species are interesting because they are actually active throughout win winter. So where the other squirrels that I talked about either hibernate through a good chunk of the winter or go into a low metabolic state, and go through hibernation and or torpor, um, these tree squirrels actually are active. Um, 
they're just very good at staying warm when it's cold. And so it can seem like they hibernate because they might disappear for a few days on the cold days, but they actually do stay active throughout the winter. They um, do this by using nests and tree cavities to stay warm um, and for protection. Red squirrels are really territorial, but the other squirrels are more social. And it's even been found that flying squirrels will share nest cavities together in the winter so that they can keep each other warm. These squirrels eat a variety of foods. They eat a lot of, uh, they eat a lot of um, tree, tree uh, uh, things from trees. So they eat seeds, they eat buds, they eat cones, they'll eat nuts. But they also are pretty well known to be predators of other species, in particular red squirrels have been found to eat baby bunnies. They've been found to eat eggs. They've been seen to eat uh, baby, uh, baby birds. And I even saw them eat, um, kill and eat offspring of rival, uh, of rival males uh, in the breeding season. So they'll even commit infanticide where they actually kill the offspring of other squirrels. So squirrels are um, really interesting because they, they do surprising things sometimes. All right, so I just gave you a lot of information about some of the squirrels that we have, or all the squirrels we have in Alberta. So now what I'd like for you to do is to test your squirrel ID knowledge. So I have a series of questions which I actually pulled from iNaturalist. So these are real observations of squirrels that people made in Alberta. I'll give you the location to give you a bit of context in case that helps you identify it. And then I'll show you the picture and I'll put up a poll um, so that you can try and guess what species you're looking at. So we'll get to see how well, uh, how well you've learned about how to tell some of the different species apart. So this is the first one for context. This is, uh, it was located in the mountains. If you look to the right of the screen, you can see Edmonton. So just to give you some context of where it was found, it was in the mountains, um, almost at the same uh, latitude as Edmonton. So this is the picture. Now just give me a moment. moment I'm going to put the poll up so that you can take a guess about what it is. So I put a poll up, you should be able to see a poll. So I want you to guess what species this is. So I'll show you the results in a minute, but there's still answers coming in here. All right, looks like we've leveled out in terms of who is participating. So I'm going to end it and share the results. So this is great. Um, if you can see the answers, most of you answered that it, or 100% of you answered hoary marmot. So that's good. That's correct. So this one is a hoary marmot. Sorry, just getting rid of my poll here. So this one is a hoary marmot. You can tell because it has a pretty grizzled appearance overall. It does have reddish on it, but it's not as red as you would expect if it was the yellow-bellied marmot. So it's not, um, not that type of marmot. And it was in the mountains and it's obviously in a pretty high elevation area because it's in a pretty rocky place on the side of a cliff. Um, so it, that suggests also that it's a marmot and not a woodchuck. It also has a more white face than uh, we typically see on woodchucks. All right, so that was very good. This is the next one. So this one was in Edmonton. So we'll see how good you are at identifying this one. So you should see another poll here. The results are coming in fast now. We've all got the hang of the how to participate in the poll, so that's great. So let me share the results. So 100% of you said red squirrel. We've got some squirrel experts here today, so that's excellent. So you're right that this is a red squirrel. Um, so you can tell because it has the reddish color 
Um, it has the lighter underside, but the rest of it is kind of a brownish reddish color. You do see variation in their coloration throughout the year. So in the winter, they will be a duller color. And in the, um, in the, the summer, they often will be a brighter color. So you will see some variation, but, um, but still they have that reddish color. So really good. Um, you'll see if you, if I can stump you with any of the other ones. This one um, is in the mountains again. If you look at the top right corner of the map, you'll, you'll see that it's Calgary. Um, so that gives you an idea of what latitude we're at. My screens, there we go. So this one, what species is this one? Just taking a minute because the answers are still coming in. So that's that's great. It's good. You're taking your time thinking about the ID. So this one has more interesting results. I'm going to end it and share the results. So there was some disagreement on this one. So that made it more interesting for sure. So this one is the golden mantled ground squirrel. The way that we can tell is that it has those white and black, white and black stripes like we see on chipmunks, except it doesn't have white and black stripes on its face. It does have an eye ring like we see on red squirrels, but it doesn't have white and black stripes. So that's how we can distinguish this from a chipmunk. It does not have the stripes on its face. We can tell it apart from 13 lined ground squirrels because these stripes are nice solid black and white stripes. On 13 lined ground squirrels, they have um, also they also have spots on their back in addition to the stripes. So that's good, good practice. Um, some of you know what species you need to work on if you wanna go ID your squirrels out in the field. This is good, this is the same kind of feedback I give my students. Just tells us what we need to learn. So this next one was a sighting in Edmonton. So this one's a little different. So again, just waiting for answers to come in. There's some variation again on this one, so that's good. There's something to talk about. All right, starting to level off here. So, oh, no, a couple more coming in. So I'm gonna end it so I can share the results. So again, some uh, variation here. So least chipmunk and red-tailed chipmunk are two answers that were given. They are difficult to tell apart. And in this lighting, it almost looks like this one could have a reddish tail, um, but this one was found in Edmonton. And red-tailed chipmunks, we only find in uh, the Western and Southwestern parts of the province, so in the mountains. So just because this one is at Edmonton, that tells us right away that it has to be a least chipmunk. Um, but if you're ever in those areas where they overlap and you're not sure, again, just submit it on iNaturalist. There's lots of experts on there that are really uh, pros at identifying chipmunks. Um, it's not a 13-lined ground squirrel. Um, the 13-lined the ground squirrel does have stripes on its head, but not through its eyes. So the stripes on its head are on the back of its head, and they're also a combination of stripes and spots. So really good guesses, um, but the answer was least chipmunk. And you're giving us things to talk about, so it's great. We have a couple more here. We're almost done though. This one was an observation taken in Calgary. So what species is it?
Well, that was a fast poll. You all answered the same question very quickly. So you're right, this is an Eastern gray squirrel. So um, we can get melanistic red squirrels. So I have seen red squirrels that are darker in color. I've never seen one that is this black. Um, so the color itself is a good giveaway. And the fact that it's in Calgary, which is where we have these Eastern gray squirrels is another good tip. It doesn't have the white eye ring like we see on red squirrels. And it's a little hard to tell scale in this picture, but if you saw it in person, you'd be able to tell it's a lot bigger. All right, so we have one last one. So this one was found in the mountains. There's a bit of um, variation around the, the, the observation. So the blue dot is where it was found, but there's a square around it because there's a bit of, um, uh, I think there's a bit of inaccuracy about where exactly it was found is my guess. Um, or the person didn't want to share the exact location, which is a possibility on iNaturalist. But it is in the mountains just south of southwest of Calgary. So what species is this? This one, the answers are coming in a bit slower. That's great. Some of you are really taking your time and thinking about it. So this one's another interesting one because there's some disagreement. So I'm gonna end the poll so I can share the results with you. So this one is a Colombian ground squirrel. We can tell that because it has reddish on its nose and down, onto, down to its legs. Um, and that's the distinction of this particular species. If it was Franklin's, we would see the face be completely gray with none of that reddish color on its nose or head. Richardson's don't have the same color pattern. Um, they kind of are one tone through most of their body with very little variation. Um, so they are a little bit different in coloration. And once you get to know them, they all, their face looks a little bit different too. But if, at this point, that's probably not obvious to many of you. But I spent a lot of my time over the summer looking at brown squirrels and Richardson's have a really distinctive face, um, at least to me. So really good guess. A lot of you were correct. And hopefully the rest of you can uh, learn a bit more about ID um, from that. So that's the end of our quiz. Um, really great. I appreciate your participation. Um, I'm going to finish off the talk by talking about conservation of squirrels. To start that, I want to talk about what it's like living with squirrels. Because one thing that a lot of people say when um, I say that I work with squirrels is that they get, you know, they have a squirrel that's in their attic, they have a squirrel that's in their shed. And a lot of people, their solution is to live trap that squirrel and move it elsewhere. And um, the challenge with squirrels is that they are very rooted to territory. So red squirrels, which is the one in this picture, this is a picture I took at a campground, they are very territorial. They will keep everybody else out. The other squirrels, um, although not as territorial, still care a lot about good real estate. So if you have good real estate for a squirrel, that place is going to be taken up regardless of whether you get rid of the squirrel or not. So if you move a squirrel out of your home because, or away from your yard because you think it's a bother, chances are you will pretty quickly get another squirrel. And that other squirrel might not be as good as the squirrel that you had previously because they do vary in how destructive they are. So if you have a squirrel that you like, that is good at living with you, that doesn't cause a lot of damage, then I recommend you keep that one because if you get rid of it, the next one might be more of a problem. So the best solution in living with squirrels is to try and block up areas that they're getting into your sheds or your houses or causing damage. Um, chicken wire is a really cheap option. Um, it might not be pretty, but you can use chicken wire to block up holes that squirrels are trying to get into. The next thing about squirrel conservation I wanted to tell you about is um, three squirrel species in the province that could use some help. So the first one is the red-tailed chipmunk. 
this one is listed as a sensitive species. This means that it could potentially go into decline at some point, um, and we're just keeping an eye on it. Really, this one is probably just mainly because it's in such a limited area in the province. So it just means we really need to be careful about protecting that area that it lives in so that it doesn't go into decline. 13 line ground squirrels um, have a status with, uh, called undetermined. And that's actually the same status as Franklin's ground squirrels. Undetermined means that we don't actually know how many um, individuals there are in the province. We don't have enough information. And um, 13 line ground squirrels, I am seeing a bit more. So maybe they're um, doing okay in the province or doing better. But Franklin's ground squirrels um, are probably going into decline. And that's what I want to talk to you more about because that's actually um, what is forming the basis of my research. So this research started because naturalists in our community actually flagged Franklin's ground squirrels as a species that probably was in decline. And so it actually was naturalists that um, started this project. They noticed that it had disappeared from a lot of places where they had previously seen it. Nature Alberta started a project um, aimed at collecting citizen science observations, which means that anyone can uh, contribute um, observations of this species. And they also looked into historical data. So this is a, an article that was written by Chow, Fraser and Schneider in 2023. It's now up on the Nature Alberta website. Um, if you just search for Nature Alberta citizen science ground squirrel, it will come up. Um, and this uh, map shows the historical records in red and the blue um, show the most recent records of Franklin's ground squirrel. And you can see that it used to be common in the central part of the province. It's largely disappeared from that area. It's largely disappeared from many northern parts um, of the province. And it's also disappeared um, from the southern parts of the province. The challenge though, is that a lot of this data came from provincial parks. And we didn't know for sure if this was because this is where humans hang out and therefore that's where we see Franklin's ground squirrel observations. This is a pretty typical observation that I got from iNaturalist. Or if that's actually because they are in, um, exclusively in parks or almost exclusively in parks. And so that's where our field season um, came in. We started a field season last year um, and our goal was to locate populations in the province to try and figure out if they are only in parks um, or if they're elsewhere. And we also wanted to look at their genetic diversity to try and figure out if, they, if there's evidence there that they're in decline. So this was a Franklin's ground squirrel that we caught as a part of our research. We put out live traps where we saw them so that we could collect DNA. I'll show you pictures of, or a video of us collecting DNA in a minute. Um, but we also, as a part of that, went to different places to try and survey them. Um, we did primarily only see them in provincial parks. We rarely saw them outside of provincial parks. So unfortunately, even with additional field data, it is suggesting that they are declining and that probably they're limited to provincial parks. But we are planning another field season this next year to, to see if we can get some more data. We also have a couple citizen science projects on the go. So these are all of the squirrel sightings. So all 14 species of squirrels in Alberta, as of today, we have 10,982 observations of squirrels from all 14 species from 3,084 observers. So this is really helpful because it tells us where people are looking and it tells us that people are finding squirrels all over the province. Um, well, especially in the central part of the province, which used to be the core part of Franklin's ground squirrel range. These are the observations as of today of Franklin's ground squirrel. And we did a lot of outreach over the summer and it really helped. We started out with about 40 30 or 40 observations in 2022 and last year um, in 2023 when we did our field, uh, field work. We ended up with 77 observations from 58 people, but you can see that there still is this gap in the distribu in distribution of the species. And when we did our field uh, season this summer, we pretty much only found them in parks, like I already said. And so they probably are in decline. 
just to show you a couple other pictures of what we did. So this is a live trap. This is a juvenile uh, Franklin's ground squirrel that we caught. The one on the right has an ear tag. So you would tag them after we took a DNA sample so that we wouldn't bother them again. So once we got a DNA sample from one individual, we didn't need them again. So just to make sure that we didn't accidentally trap them a second time and bug them too much, we would put in an ear tag so that we can, uh, we can identify them going forward. We actually experimented with using mouth swabs to, uh, to sample. So this is what it looks like when we swab a squirrel's mouth for DNA. It'll load for me. There we go. So this was actually the meanest squirrel we handled all season. And yet when we swabbed her mouth, she was very calm. So we're very happy with the results that mouth swabs um, actually don't seem to bother them too much because what is more typically done with squirrels is to take ear tissue samples, which is obviously more invasive. And also we found when we did the genetics, which we're still working on the genetic side, but we were able to use it to get DNA. So that's really exciting. So we're gonna keep working on this next summer. So I wanted to tell you what you can um, do to help. So if you can submit any of the squirrel observations that you have, that would be great. And if you can keep an eye out for Franklin's ground squirrel, this would really help our research to help us figure out if this is an endangered species. Right now we need additional observations. They seem to be common in provincial parks. This is a picture from Sir Winston Churchill Provincial Park. Um, but please keep your eyes open for them elsewhere. We'd love to know if we do find them elsewhere. We often find them along edges of dense vegetation. They really need that dense vegetation, but they do come out into the open to forage. And for a species that seems to be in decline, surprisingly, they don't seem to mind people too much. This is a juvenile. It might be hard to see, but it's on the left-hand side of the photo at the kind of where the sidewalk and the bridge meet. And it's eating dogwood berries. So it's funny because they are, well, it's not funny that they're in decline, but it's funny that they seem okay with people because they, even though they are probably in decline, they still are fine with being around people, at least in these parks. Um, and I see them eating berries a lot in the late summer and dandelions earlier on in the year. So we have two iNaturalist projects. If you're not familiar with iNaturalist, it's an app that you can either use through your phone or through a desktop um, version where you can submit observations of all kinds of species, so really any wild species that you want. We have two projects going on right now. One is on Franklin's ground squirrels, and one is on all squirrels of Alberta. So the Franklin's ground squirrel project tells us more about what's going on with Franklin's ground squirrels, and the, the squirrels of Alberta tells us where people are looking to give us a better sense of where we have people out looking, but not able to find Franklin's ground squirrels. You can also find more resources on the, the Nature Alberta website. Um, there is a free Squirrels of Alberta um, ID guide that you can download. That's actually where all the photos from this uh, presentation came from. So if you want basically a book version of the ID uh, lesson that I gave you, you can download the guide there. You can also find other resources like a Franklin's Ground Squirrel coloring page and uh, information about the project and a downloadable Franklin's Ground Squirrel call because they do have a very distinctive call. So that's all that I have for today. Um, these are all pictures from iNaturalist. Um, I really appreciate anyone that has submitted observations to iNaturalist. They are really a key part of this project. Um, also appreciate the support from Nature Alberta for having me today and for supporting this project and getting this started. And also thanks to all the naturalists that flagged this species as probably needing additional help because this project would not have happened without our community of naturalists. So now I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you so much, Jessica. I think we all learned a great deal about squirrels, even those who uh, we're well versed on squirrels before. I think we've um, heard some amazing stories. Thank you so much. If you have questions, I know there's a few that have been typed into the chat already. I'm going to get to that. But before I do, I just wanted to share quickly. 
Um, let me just take over here. Can you see the Franklin's Ground Squirrel Project webpage right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, if you visit this page that Jessica mentioned, you can download the Squirrels of Alberta resource. So there's a download button here. But my favorite fun thing here is you can also download the Franklin's Ground Squirrel Trill as your ringtone. So you can add it to your phone and have that ringing. Um, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to try and play it here for you. You'll have to let me know if, it, if it's playing. You hear it? Yeah. 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 So it's a very distinct call and our communications um, team cleaned it up a little bit and put it together on this download here. If you click the download Franklin's Ground Squirrel ringtone, um, it comes out as a perfect file and it sounds just like a ringtone. Um, so it's a lot of fun to add to your phone and it starts conversations that helps raise awareness for Franklin's Ground Squirrels. So thank you so much, Jessica. I'm going to end the recording now and then we'll get into the questions. Let me just find the recording button. I always lose it at this point. <laughs> Let's see. I think I hit it.